Hi, everyone. My name is Ben Shapiro. I'm Nuri Golgani. I'm Jasmine Villia. My name is Michael Biesca. And we are... And we are... And we are... Techmate. 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 most powerful thing I took away from the REC program is that I can really create my own path in life. My ideas for the future and my own dreams are actually not too far out of reach. And that's what the REC helped me realize. Well, check out our company. It's called Till. And we help restaurants sell food at the end of their business day so that they don't have to throw it away. What I have learned in the REC Innovation Lab is, one, starting a business is a lot harder than it looks. But really building your network and using the resources that were offered. I just want to say thank you, Tanya, for a great semester. The REC Innovation Lab means the world to me and has given me the mentorship, network, and confidence to no longer question if I'll have the resources I need to take the risks necessary to start a company. 5% of young adults are actually scared to drive on the road. And the perfect answer for them is virtual. Our product is a VR driving simulator that allows new nervous drivers to practice in the comfort of their own home. And as we always say, be, be safe. safe. Be constant. Virtual. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paula from Cloud Club Collective, our digital toolbox. The one thing the rec showed me was what it actually takes to be a successful CEO and the amount of resilience and drive that's needed to actually flourish in the industry. I'm grateful that the REC introduced us to reality and what our futures can actually be. So cool. It's such, uh, just such a cool video, such a cool video. So, that was um, that was a video that, that Mike a compilation video that he just made uh, for us and I'm 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 floored I'm, I'm constantly floored by your work so <laughs> looks like we have um, most of the people here now so we'll go ahead and get started uh, thank you all um, for for joining yes I I, I concur G great job Mike great job. Um, uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll introduce um, the guests that we have with us today. Uh, Mike Clark is with company uh, We Are Kingdom. He's uh, he's a vendor here at um, at uh, Miramar College. Uh, he, he makes uh, videos for us um, in some of the programs and, and through some of the projects that we're doing. And um, he's also helped uh, me a lot with my videos that I make for uh, for my online classes because I was never an online teacher. Right, I'll, I'll admit it. I was uh, not much of an online teacher, uh, not much of a videographer. I hadn't done this ever before. And so it was all new to me. And um, some of the advice that he'd given me was so helpful. And uh, that's why he's here today is to share some of that advice um, with all of you so that uh, when you're making those online videos, um, you can get the most out of them and, 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 and do them right. So um, with that, I'll uh, let Mike take the floor and talk a little bit about um, himself and, and what he does. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, having me back. This is my second time doing this. And uh, it is a little weird virtually, but I feel like I could see most of you guys on my screen. Um, yeah, I was, I mean, just to go, I was a nurse for nine years of my life. I did that for a chunk of time. Then I got into to music and did some stuff. And now for the past four years I've been doing video and I stepped out about three years ago and started the We Are Kingdom Productions business. And I just realized in video that there's just, everybody needs it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have to do a lot of convincing a lot of times about video because uh, now with social media, you know, I tell most businesses, if you're not online, you don't exist. Um, because the, this, this phone we have in our pocket, this is the new TV, this is you know, where we do and watch everything uh, is along with our computers, our TVs for Netflix and that kind of stuff. But for business, I always tell people that this is where people are at and this is your audience. And social media made it really easy for us to reach the audience. Uh, not easy in the sense of algorithms, but easy in the sense of if you want somebody to see something you've created, 
here's a link and they could watch it right away. So um, I've been doing a lot of video uh, for businesses in that regard, especially right now with COVID, real estate and Miramar College and Mossy Toyota and uh, different companies because they're needing to be seen. And so um, I don't know if I need to convince anybody the importance of video right now, but definitely would love to answer any questions that anybody has uh, definitely not the expert, but I've been experiencing a lot more of what's helping people out right now during so, COVID. So, so Mike, um, one thing I before I uh, open it um, to the audience uh, for for questions, uh, I, I I did get a lot of um, a lot of questions that I, I thought I'd, I'd share with you about what people should do with their videos once they record them, right? Um, how, things like how they edit them and then really like where they hold them. Like, should they be going on YouTube or, or Vimeo? And then what's the benefit if we do use YouTube and um, things like this, maybe if you could share yeah. a little bit about that and then, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's, I always have to know who my, um, is this mostly teachers? Is, are you guys all teachers? Okay, so yeah, maybe we can see a show of hands. Uh, we'll, we'll be the class, right? So uh, if, if you can uh, raise your hand, if you're, if you're a teacher, to raise your hand. You just, uh, by the little participants, you uh, lift your hand up. I think we had six, seven, seven, okay. eight, nine. Most of them are going to 10 participants are teachers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. So, um, so thank you teachers for being on here. Cause I know this is a whole new world for you guys. And I, f I feel for you. Um, my, my wife does homeschooling and she's trying to figure it all out. And so it's, it's a lot. So, uh, my heart's with you. So I would say as far as, uh, where to upload, um, the hardest part is, okay, how do I do a video? You know, do I have to edit it? You know, once it's edited, where does it go? These are definitely questions that um, need to be answered. But the first thing is like, what are you willing to use? What are you willing to sacrifice? Uh, as far as like, do you want to use your phone? Well, if you use your phone, you're going to sacrifice on audio a little bit. It's going to be okay, but it's going to sound like you're on your phone. Um, do you want to buy a camera that maybe has a microphone that will allow you to communicate a little bit better, which... Um, there's many, many, you could email me and I can send you links of good, good little microphones that would work for maybe something you're doing. Um, but ultimately it's once you have the footage, let's say on your phone, I always tell people you can upload everything to YouTube from your phone. You could edit. There's a, if you're on a, um, iPhone, there's iMovie that's I think free yeah. nowadays. And it's actually, if you take, if you go on YouTube and type in, how to, how to do iMovie on the iPhone. I swear, there's like a five minute tutorial of everything you need to know for basic stuff. Um, and then it lets, you, it lets you export it straight to YouTube from there. And YouTube, yes, is the place, it's, it's the place to be. I, I, as a business owner, oh, I have everything on Vimeo because a lot of times my stuff's protected. I'll send out links to people sometimes with a password if it needs it so nobody else could see it. It's kind of like, but... Um, for the most part, it's more of a business, uh, place to hold all my stuff. YouTube is great because it's, it's, anybody can see it. You can have it public, private, however you want to put it. Um, but it's a good spot to have because most devices upload straight to YouTube. Uh, if you don't want to edit it and you're like, Hey, I want to teach this class and set up my phone and just go for it. After you're done, you stop it and you could upload it straight to YouTube from there. And, um, and one of the things that you did tell me um, also, and, and, and I think um, has been so helpful for me, is that YouTube automatically adds the closed captions yep, so that you're yep. ADA compliant. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a hu huge thing because I used to have to, for a lot of my clients, I used to have to type out every word and it was like, oh, I'm going to die. Um, and so now YouTube, there's a setting that puts closed captions. It literally is like, do you want closed captions? Yes. And then it adds it all and some, but you have to go back and look and make sure you could actually go in and if something's wrong or they say something that you didn't say, or it's, a, you just go in and edit it really quick. It's actually super intuitive and really user-friendly. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube's just great like that because they're realizing most people are, are doing this for the first time. This isn't just for like the influencers and creators. This is for everybody. That's, that's why I love YouTube. And you um, 
And I know uh, one time you told me, uh, uh, I see some questions in the chat that I'm going to start reading, but I, one time you told me that I needed to not worry so much about making everything perfect and um, that, that authenticity was a good thing and to go with shorter videos. And th uh, those were also just amazing uh, recommendations for me and, and true. My students started watching my videos then, right? And watching the yeah. video when we did the shorter. So I- um, so there was one of the questions in the chat. Uh, do you do you recommend writing your speech first because they don't want to be sound sound like they're reading it off off of a script? Yeah, I'll kind of go off what Tanya was just saying because I think it's important, um, especially for teachers. Giddy, you want to get across uh, the bulk kind of what you're trying to say in a condensed version nowadays, right? Because our kids gonna sit for. 45 minutes and listen to a lecture. I don't know, maybe. Um, I just don't, I don't think so. So I feel like um, allowing yourself to, yes, write down what exactly you want to say, then start scratching through like, you know what, I actually don't need that. This is what I want them to leave with. If there is one paragraph that I could send each student with, I want to make sure they get that part and really center it around whatever that is. And I know this is really easier said than done. I'm not like, oh, I'm sure this is super easy for you. But um, the shorter Instagram did a lot of the work for us. They told us that people, students like one minute long videos, <laughs> yep. if they yep. want them longer. And for you guys as teachers, they're going to be more engaged because there's a specific thing they're trying to get from you. Um, so it's not like you need to have an eye candy drone shot coming down and explosions to get their attention. Um, but if there's a particular thing you're teaching on, they're coming to learn that thing. So they'll stay for longer. They'll stay for five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, really 20 minutes, you're really pushing it. But um, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, it's it, to know exactly what to put in there. So as far as writing to answer that question, absolutely. But you don't want to make it feel like you're just reading off the script. Um, if you have me work with you, if that's something you choose to do, um, it's definitely a lot easier because I could add B-roll stuff to engage a bit more, but I know that's not, it, it may be super easy for everybody to do, but just know that I am willing to, uh, you know, if that's something that you guys can, are able to do, so. Thanks, yeah. And someone, someone also mentioned that, I'm sorry, no, someone no, also mentioned that you can add auto, auto captions in the video. And those are editable, so uh, that's a good suggestion there. Yes, um, absolutely. So, uh, and then um, I, think, I think, Rohan, what they were getting at is, is uh, they wanted to know uh, specifically how to add those, uh, those auto captions. And the question was from, um, uh, oh, from Ashley, um, where can you find the setting um, to add the captioning? Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you could. I just went in and I, I found that setting. Okay. But uh -huh. I changed that, but I had some videos. So will it go back and recaption the videos that I've already have uploaded or do I need to like re-upload those? Oh, oh you're on mute, Mike, yeah. Sorry. Are you there? Are you there, Mike? Yeah, it's, shoot. Oh, we can hear you, we can hear you. Okay, I don't know why it's frozen. I'm trying, I'm trying to unmute it. Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you now, yeah. Okay, it might just be my Wi-Fi. Oh, there I am. Hello. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm pretty sure you don't have to re-upload because it's ingrained in YouTube. So you can go back to your video, go into that setting, and you should be able to add the captions um, that way. Yes. And I've done that, Ashley. Uh, personally, I've done that myself in the past. And, and you just go to edit video function and you can go back and and uh, um, and fix your, your videos and if anybody else has any uh, any other teachers okay. who have done it and... there was a suggestion in the in the chat about the ios clips app that can that comes with the iphone um for creating short 60 second videos with live captions so that's a cool suggestion yeah it's it's cool for it's but it's only for a certain purpose um you know, it's, 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 if you have a business or, um, you're wanting just to catch people's attention for that minute. Yeah. But for teaching or anything like that, or really explaining your product, um, you know, I would, I would, I would do more of the iMovie 
I would do your iPhone and your Android. So I'm not an Android person, so I don't know it as well, but I do know the Android has a, an amazing camera on it as well. So the iPhone does, I mean, they, it has an incredible, it's probably the one camera, I have a ton of stuff, but it's the one camera that at least comes out once every shoot that I do because it's, it's really good. So the capabilities on there, but there is some settings you'll want to go into and look at depending on what you do. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And then I know also, um, one of the things that, that a lot of, a lot of, uh, teachers will do is we do, even if you don't like doing videos, um, doing inst, uh, instructional videos, uh, or sorry, int um, introductory videos, just, a you know, something to humanize the class to say, this is me. Hi, welcome to the class. And, yeah. uh, and things, maybe clips might be good for something like that. Would you think Mike? Or? Yeah. yeah. I'll be honest. I haven't really, wor I, I hopped on it when it first came out because I thought it was a really cool idea. I have not touched it since. So I probably not the expert on it. Um, but I do like the in introductory, something to kind of like bring the students in, I think is, is helpful rather than just like, hi, I'm your teacher for the day. <laughs> or hi, I'm, You know, I yeah. think that's, I think every kid is getting Zoom right now. And I think the more, I mean, I have three teenage daughters. It's just like, it's tough. It's tough. So, um, you know, having something a little different that the kids could watch, maybe something that is pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. um, and again, feel free to email me. I, I could walk you through some things to maybe make it easier for you on that regards. But um, yeah, there's, it, it's, it's a tough audience, I know. So sometimes having clips that maybe add a little bit of fun and stuff in the background could be, could be cool. Other questions from the audience, and feel free to unmute yourselves and ask the question yourself. Um, or, uh, yeah, Mike, I got a question because <clears throat> I am kind of a techie person, and so I have like lots of different options that I'm exploring. So, there's like you know, there's uh, uh, there's Snagit, there's Camtasia, there's screen capture. Now, for those of us that teach that are on this call, there's uh, Canvas Studio. And each of them kind of have their pluses and minuses, and I'm actually becoming an expert in all of that because that's the way I roll. But anyway, <laughs> do you like how do you edit your videos? Like, I don't know if this is going to get into that, but like, I I think you're doing the Vimeos for the Rec Center, right? Like, and those are rad. I I like. Are you ever going to teach us how to do that? Like, I love that stuff. Like, so to me. <laughs> editing part of it that's the most fascinating yeah well first off thank you um it's it's a tough one because i've been editing for years now um editing kind of comes as you go i so just so you know i i started on imovie imovie was my jam i mean i was like what can't i do on this and i was doing i mean i, I didn't start the business yet but i was doing a lot on imovie because Apple made it very intuitive for people. That's, you know, then Apple bought Final Cut and I went over to Final Cut because it reminded me of iMovie on steroids and Final Cut's now where I do all of my editing. And to be honest, and I just throw this out, this is my secret sauce and maybe this is a bad thing as a business owner to tell you, but like YouTube has so many great videos of just, I've learned so much from just searching, hey, give me the basics for Final Cut. Give me the basics for iMovie you know, where you'd be able to go in and add transitions, add titles, add, you know, you could crop the video the way you want, you know, different stuff, which some stuff you probably already know, but like, I think Final Cut is the, is amazing. A lot of people use Adobe Premiere, which is also amazing in its own. Um, I just happen to use Final Cut and uh, editing is just one of those things that takes time to learn. I've just, you know, over the years, I've learned different things that works. So I have a ton of plugins that I've added to add, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. the, the yeah. blur effect where it comes down right. smooth. I have a lot of gimbals to make sure my shots are smooth. And so a lot of it's the shooting as well. But is Final Cut a Mac product? Like, are you on a Mac? Yeah, I am on a Mac. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, and I would, I don't know if somebody knows, but I don't, I think Final Cut could be, because I could also do Adobe, could be a, a PC as I'll, as well I'll, I'm just not sure I'll let you know 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> it is, actually, it is on PC also. You can do okay. it on that. Okay, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, sorry. I know that's, it wasn't the best answer, but I just know if you go to YouTube and you search, I want to know how to do a blur transition. I want to know how to, and you remotely know what you're trying to talk about. It'll find it. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then, um, so, so uh, Mike, when you're sharing videos, you're not sharing the file, correct? I think this is a lot of times where a lot of teachers go wrong here. Uh, they, they try to download the files um, you know, or to their students, like an email or something like this. Um, we, we just kind of explain what you do. Like you have, yeah. you've recorded a little video of yourself talking. The next step is. Yeah. So. Uh, I would use YouTube to upload. So you record yourself, you upload it. You could do it from your phone or your computer, but you upload it straight to YouTube. Uh, once it's on there, it is a file. It is not, it's not the, it's, it's a link that you could send to any of your students. They click on the link and it opens up rather than sending them a whole file. You know, that that's one pretty impossible depending on how long it is. Uh, and two, it's, it's going to be hard to open up. So, um, the only only time I would recommend using the actual file that that you have on your phone is uploading maybe to Facebook or Instagram, because um, then people from Facebook don't have to now go over to another platform to watch your video. Uh, so I always tell people, if, if you're on Facebook and you have a video for it, keep it on Facebook, because now they don't have to go to different places. But I would always say for teachers, YouTube is the housing spot. They could go see, you could even make playlists. So if you have, let's say 10, 10, 10 different uh, topics, you can make that into a playlist for them. So if they go from one, it'll take them right to the next one and just keep going you know, down the list. And you could put them in any order you wanna put them in. You could just put the description of what you want them to be. Um, but definitely YouTube is the, the, play, the place to go after you have a video to, to upload. Did I, did I answer that? Yes. Okay. So uh, other questions um, from the- uh, from I've the got a question. Yeah. Martin. Uh, hi folks, Martin here. Um, so do we have lots of, are these elementary school teachers on the call or, or high school? Mostly college. College, oh, okay. Um, I was just gonna add that um, I'm doing some work with the local uh, unified school district that's uh, mostly you know, working mostly with middle school high school and um, they use Google Classroom and and the tool they use for video is something called we video hmm. and uh, what it's nice is it it has kind of like a built-in educator kind of feature to it where you can sort of control uh, who has access to it and and um, uh, you know for for kids especially it's it's important that you uh, make sure that the videos don't get out in the wild uh, if the parents don't want them to. So there's lots of controls around that as well. And I might yeah. mention that, uh, that on, um, on the PC, there's a, a piece of software I like to use called Camtasia, which is designed for creating educational courseware. It works really well. Cool, I've heard, I've heard of that. Thanks, Martin. I know Julie also mentioned mentioned Camtasia, and um, and uh, you know I I saw that Denise was on the call or on the uh, you know the workshop a little earlier. And Denise, are you still here? Yeah, yeah. I'm still here. Oh, Hi, everyone. Oh. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Happy to see everyone. Those amazing videos. Thanks for being here, Mike. <laughs> I just put a question in the chat. I was curious, I was the one talking about clips, first of all, but also um, I was just curious about how long approximately that takes you, Mike, to from shooting, um, editing, and then finalizing the video. Yeah, uh, good question. So it always depends on the project at hand. So some are, some are shorter than others. So if it, are you kind of talking if I were to come uh, film uh, a lecture possibly or um no I was just curious you know for us that are teaching um and I know that you understand because you just mentioned your kids and your wife and everything so I mean part of it is really just the 
managing our time online. And I'm an experienced online instructor. I've taught for many years, but part of it is just time management. I don't record super long lectures. I go for like shorter things. Um, but I do have bigger things that I want to take the time to do and that I try to make those evergreen so that I can use them each semester and not like put in dates or anything. So yes. part of it is just trying to allot the time that I would need, you know, and, and be really um, intentional about which ones I plan out and dedicate that time to in which ones. I mean, I literally do some little videos when I'm outside walking my dog and I just want to check in and say some things and just be in and out and um, manage that time. I mean, all of us that are on here are teaching like multiple classes with multiple students and managing all of that. But I do want to dedicate Crazy. the time to some of these bigger videos like that. So I'm just wondering how much time to a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me personally, it's fairly quick um, because I've been doing it a while. So um, to like, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. So for instance, I'll just tell you what I'm doing with the automotive department, if that's okay, Tanya. Please, I was um, going to ask, would you like me to sh show one of those videos or? I mean, uh, I, if, if they wanted to just maybe see it after, but what I'll say about what automo automotive is, because some of them are a little lengthier, but yeah. what, what I did uh, with them is, for instance, I'll just say the tire video. So he had to diagnose the tire. So he had to dump it in this water bucket to see it with some bubbles to see if there was air coming out the hole. Then once he diagnosed it, the tools he had to use to get it out, then the machine, I mean, it was a whole process of, you know, I think of maybe one of your longer videos. So I filmed it. I had a GoPro in the bottom of that bucket of water. I mean, we we really made it uh, cool. So it wasn't just this boring, you know, somebody talking about changing a tire. We had, we implemented other videos just to make it more engaging. So that's kind of what I'm doing with automotive right now, because I do think there is bigger projects for you guys that would take a long time. And if, you know, and if I was able to come in and help, it would probably take a fraction of the time because it's just what I do. So to give you an answer, I mean, to, to film it right, to make sure the audio, audio is huge, you guys. I can't stress enough that, that to get a good mic because if people, if people are gonna listen to you for longer than two minutes, I would even say for two minutes, your audio is so important. So, and there's a lot of great uh, audio things for your phone. Uh, they're a little bit, some of them are pricey, but Sure is a good, S-H-U-R-E is a good brand. Um, just make sure your audio is good. So for instance, if I were to come in, I had, a, I had a lapel mic on. I had cameras where he didn't have to nail the line. He just kind of said it and I put it all together. And it took me, it took me a couple days to put together. And by a couple days, I just meant like we filmed it. And then two days later, he had an edited video. And, and that was 17 minutes long. So that was uh, filming it, getting it done. Most, most of you guys probably aren't going to do, uh, maybe, but if you're going to do longer videos like that, having, having things that you could, like walking the dog, I think is great. But even as you're talking on iMovie, you could do your lecture and then add elements on the top to, if you're talking about dogs, have videos of dogs while you're talking about dogs. You know, that's, a, that's something, I call it B-roll. It's called background roll. So any way that you could bring your your uh, engagement level in with pictures and visuals, especially for students, is huge. Instead of just a talking head, you have, um, you know, again, if you're talking about I'm out, I'm outside with the sunshine. You have any other video of a sunshine, you know, shining while you're talking. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's super it helpful. Just, Thank you. Yeah, it just it just yeah, it just adds like a, another element that especially for those bigger projects you're talking about. If you don't have somebody like me to come in and do it, I would say just make sure you add some, some visuals for people to see. And there's a ton of stuff on YouTube. There's a ton of stuff you could rip off. If you're not, you know, making money off it, you could grab the videos and utilize, you know, uh, there's it. You could find anything is my point. And, you know, I think a lot Thank of us, we, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was, uh, but I was going to say, a lot of us, we do want to make some of those nicer videos that we're going to use again and again and again. What, I think you yeah. call them green videos, uh, things that just d don't don't spoil after the semester. So uh, those ones we do want to spend some more time on. And um, so would you recommend that we get our, our own B-roll that we should like save shots of, I don't know, our classes or 
don't, I, I, well, campus or I don't know. Yeah, so what I've been doing with the students, uh, like with Paula, who's on here, like uh, they'll give me what they say and then I go find a lot of the B-roll off for them. Um, so it's it's just dependent on who uh, and what, you know, who's who's communicated and what they're what they're wanting. So Paula's having me change a few of the B-roll shots so we mix it, mix it around and get it right where she's excited and then, then we're good to go. But a lot of times I tackle the B-roll uh, I either film it myself or, uh, again, there's so many resources on YouTube and videos that you could grab to make it tell your story a little bit better. So, again, if you don't, I'm assuming you guys don't have me, uh, though I would love to work with you guys. But I'm just saying, if you're doing it on your own, iMovie and these other um, video, uh, I think it was Sony, I forget who else said in the chat about some of the, uh, the PC uh, uh, video programs they'll allow you to put in a, a video and then add stuff on the top of it. You just drag it on and over that video. And it's pretty, pretty simple. So it just allows, you know, I think uh, uh, George Lucas said every 15 seconds, he likes to change the scenery. That's why I use two cameras on whoever I'm talking to, because I'll go from one camera angle of them to the set, another camera angle if I don't have any sort of B-roll to put over. So just to change it up a bit to keep people engaged way better than just the talking head here's what you guys need to do it's going to be a it's going to be tough to try to keep that going and there was a question here from angela who was asking about doing um <clears throat> her videos are entirely screen sharing um while she's demoing how to do things and i do a lot of these i think a lot of teachers do this when we're we just i mean personally i go on zoom and then i share my screen and there's a little box of me up here talking and then there's my uh, screen that i'm looking at of powerpoints mm -hmm. or else which is probably very boring for the students. Um, is there any thoughts on how to make that less boring for the students? <laughs> <laughs> um, the only thing I could think of is, you know, just filming it differently. Differently, you know. I again, I don't really know what's being communicated, so it's hard to say. Uh, you know, if it's math problems, uh, it's going to be math problems. But if it's you know anything visual that you could capture to make more interesting. I mean, I'm always for that, but it, I know that's a difficult thing Angela, when you're you not want, into video. Did you want to elaborate maybe or? Are yeah. yeah. So like one thing that I do is I open up, you know, the library catalog, for example, and whether it's in person or on video, it's always, and we have this discussion amongst librarians all the time, how to not do these things even in person in a really boring way, but online and videos is even worse, I think. And it's, <laughs> So often, you know, click on this, you know, see these three bars, that's where you go next. And then this opens up and then this is where you type in certain keywords. And you try to, you know, crack jokes about the kind of keywords you put in there or, you know, things like that to make it a little less boring. But you also don't want a 15 minute video. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, so what, what are you trying to communicate in those, uh, on those screens? What is it that you teach or how to use these different tools that we have as well okay. as different search principles at the library so ask, yeah oh, so I you see. know things like the asterisk or the um question mark you know there are these different tools that you can put in there or things like the boolean and or not how to put search strings together okay so you have a very specific thing that people if they want to know about it that's something they probably will spend you know time wanting to know does that make right. sense? Right, and that's where I feel so, bad because they're sort of captive audiences. Yeah, like you sure. can't get away, but I would also I mean, like the, not to torture them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get it. Um, the, the only thing I could think of, again, I'm, I'm uh, in this, again, Tanya, I don't know if this fits in anywhere, but would be able to come and film, you know, and do it where it's either live and you're showing me as we're filming or you have somebody filming you showing the points. I don't, I don't really know how that all works, but it sounds like you have to put up a screen and then the people like me have to then click on it. Is that correct? Like, or, or is it you just showing them where to go and they click on their own while they're watching you? Yeah. I think, yeah. So Angela, if you, if you wanted to answer, if not, I'll just say that, uh, yeah, she's showing them the process of, of doing things like searching for books basically. Or okay. For for publications and articles. So they are kind of a captive audience. They do need to know step-by-step step what to do. And then, um, so a, a lot of, you know, 
a lot of the teachers won't have in their budget the ability to you know to, to maybe bring you in but then maybe some of them do some of them might have some extra you know there's extra resources available uh, i was able to i was able to get several videos made um and thank you by the way for for doing that and um, and that was very helpful because we need them now right things have changed and this is this is how we, we teach and uh, what I what I did is the videos that I had Mike make were ones that I knew that were going to be um, enduring things that we could use for a very long time. I do want to share that video if it's okay with you. Maybe share with them the video that you made for uh, sure. one of the automotive just so they can see. But then um, for the most part, though, most of us we're doing it on our own. We're we're just uh, we're figuring it out and making it happen. So let's see here. Which one of these should I show them? Um. Maybe one of the shorter ones. Let's see. What is it? Uh, it's hard to see. I can't. I'm Let me move this. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. There we go. Um, checking tread. Is there? I can't see the timestamp, huh? Uh -uh. Um, I mean, all those are pretty fair. Those were just quick little ones we did. So they all should be fairly. This one, checking tread depth. Yeah, why not? Hey guys, John here from San Diego Miramar College, the Advanced Transportation Department. I've been here for about five years. I'm the instructional lab technician here. Today's video is going to be on tread depth. Possible methods that you can do for tread depth. The first one is with a traditional tread depth gauge, and the second one is with a household penny. When using the tread depth gauge, you have two possible measurements, 30 seconds and millimeters. Most people use 30 seconds, that's what we're gonna be using today. The minimum tread depth for a tire before replacing is generally two or three 30 seconds. When using the gauge, just prime it with your finger, insert it to your tread. We generally measure the outside, inner, and the middle. Pull the gauge out, look at the base here of the gauge. Ours measures five 30 seconds. So the tire is still good. We won't be replacing that for the meantime, but if it gets any lower, we'll want to look into replacing that. If you don't have a gauge, you can use a penny. Just check the center console of your car or look in between your couch cushions. The easiest way to do this is you take Abraham Lincoln's head, face it down, and insert into your tread. If you can see the top of his head, your tread is too low, generally around two or three 30 seconds. If you cannot see Lincoln's head, your tread's generally good. So that concludes today's segment. Thank you for watching and please tune in to all our social medias. It's pretty glitchy on mine. I don't know if you guys saw that. Sorry about, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. About That's okay. Glitchiness, maybe it's just a, my, my connection. But um, I thought that was actually maybe a really good video just to, to sort of, um, for Angela, I mean, she, he was describing a very a systematic step-by-step um, -step process, but it was something interesting to, to watch. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I would say, say but, um, contrast that to I put the link in I don't know I hope it works um, but I put a link into one of the ones that I've been showing my students in the chat box and now I can't find it I'll grab I it, um, it yeah I have it I, I see it I'll, I'll grab it and then can I see it is that okay is that do we yeah. have time yeah, yeah yeah no I'm showing it to everybody as I get do not do it this way <laughs> yeah. kind of a way like do not do what I do <laughs> yeah. okay let's see here Oops. Ah, sorry. I just have to exit. Full. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Sorry. You're on my. Screen. You're. Opala. There we go. Sorry, it's just a little slow. There it is. I think. Oh. Everybody, it's Angela again. I've heard from a number of you that Academic Search Complete wasn't working, and I talked to your professor, and we've gotten uh, permission to use Google Scholar. I wanted to give you a few tips on Google Scholar to make the most out of it, so let's get going. Uh, first, we're going to go to this uh, upper left-hand corner to these three boxes, or these three lines, and then come down here to Settings. And then we're going to go here to library links and we're going to type in the name of our college and do a quick search and see these two <coughs> that popped up. Um, San Diego Miramar College Library, view it, 
and request. We're going to make sure those are both selected and okay. click on save. I, ca- I kind of get. I kind of get what you're <laughs> trying to do. Okay. So, so Angela, I would um, uh, again, um, I I would love I would love to film. If yeah, I, I would say this to everybody. If you guys have ones like Evergreen, I think somebody, I think one of you guys called it. Like if you have videos that can be long lasting and you could utilize these videos over and over throughout the year, I would say if, if possible and there's there's budget and, and, and you guys can use some of it, I'll come and do it because now automotive is forever. I made those specifically so they'll forever have a library full of content for them to use. It's now just a resource that's going to now be on the uh, website and only for students kind of thing. So um Angela, just right off the bat, I think people need to see you. Yeah. Uh, I know it might be difficult, but they need to see you because I want to know who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as you go to the screenshot, it's like, okay, let me show you. Boom, screenshot. Let me take you through. Have it go back to you. You know, where there's just a mixture of you and then teaching it. That would be my uh, advice as far as um, not just doing screenshot. Um, I could see film it even different, film it with a good microphone and you're talking and it's like almost like you're showing them and I'm filming the screen and getting a really solid shot of what you're doing on the screen rather than just a screenshot if you wanted to go that route. But um, for anybody that has those longer videos that you could see using over and over again, um, I would say try it out with me and see what's possible. But I know that's not for a lot of you. So I would say the more that you could help people uh, under the more that you can bring people in with different uh, pictures and different your face, you know, and uh, splitting it up, you know, every so often. So there's not just a talking face the whole time, the better, you know, it's like I said, uh, George Lucas, I don't know if this is standard, but he says every 15 seconds, change the angle, change, you know, add a B roll shot, change something just to, you know, cause you have kids going, Oh, they did something new, staying in, staying in. Oh, something new. You know, it's kind of like that idea, right? So. <laughs> Thank you. You know, that kind of brings up a follow-up question in that uh, what's the ideal length for a video? You know, we live in a TikTok society and uh, uh, kids can, seem to have low attention spans, short short attention spans. What do you what do you recommend? Yeah, so Martin, I think you said you were a younger class, right? Okay, yeah, that's, that's a struggle because you're right there, TikTok, Instagram, I always tell people Instagram did all the the analytics for us. They told us that kids only like a minute video. And if it's really engaging, you could keep watching by uh, IGTV. So now they can keep watching the video depending on what the what it is. But I would say for something you're teaching, because if you're teaching a certain about how to uh, change your password on the iPhone, people are going to want to listen and hear and have, know how to do that. So it's not always you don't always need this brilliant way of showing people just like Angela, you may not need all that stuff. People want to know where they need to go. That's just it. They just want to get on the screen and know where to go. And so, but for kids, I would say a minute video is kind of for, you know, 13 and younger is kind of where you're at. But for college, I think you have a little bit, you know, people are engaged because they're, they're at college for a reason, you know, kids that are not in college are kind of like, they more have to be there. So you kind of have to grab them with visuals and different things. Any way you could put, you know, relevant stuff into the video to kind of, you know, Angela said, you know, making fun of some of the words that they use, like stuff like that's fun, you know, that'll keep them engaged. But uh, uh, two minutes or less is where I'd like to keep videos um, mostly. So I was going to say also, um, so some people were asking me questions in the private chat about like how we actually got the the videos uh, made and um, you know there are um, there are grants right now and and uh, there there's some um, you know some additional funding is available right now to help teachers uh, since we've had to transition to this new online environment so I don't know if everybody has access to those those but you might want to check. Um, Mike is like, he's done an amazing job for a lot of different uh, departments here and a very, very, very reasonably priced for the videos. Um, 
yeah, a fraction of what they would cost if you um, j just went out and found somebody. And he does such a great job and, and, and so fast. And another thing, too, is I, I love the music that you put in the videos. That's actually <laughs> what told me is you, I love I love it. They're always really dynamic, engaging. And um, yeah, so that, that is an option may, or that could potentially be an option for some of you. I, I don't know. It was for us, which we're so grateful for. But um, you might want to check on that, too. Um, so. Yeah, and then I will, I will say really quick, that just to piggyback off that for one second, um, music is so important, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a musician background. The music that you embed under your video, if you're, if you're talking about something very monotone, man, put some upbeat music behind it, and it automatically takes it to a different place. It's, just ma it's magical how it works. Not too loud where it's, it's very obvious. I try to keep it very much just embedded, so... There's a lot of uh, audio uh, websites out there that are royalty free because unfortunately, if you put up a video with a Taylor Swift song, you're going to get the whole thing taken off. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, music is Where's relevant music. Where specifically can we go? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Tony. Oh, I was going to ask where specifically can we get that music um, for free? <laughs> royalty free. So. So a lot of it's not, not free. There is royalty free. So if you oh. look up, if you just Google search, um, I use Soundstripe. I pay a monthly thing and I get to use hundreds of songs. So if you're making videos all the time, you want to use a paid probably subscription. But if you look up uh, royalty free music, there's quite a few sites. Uh, I haven't used them in a while, but I used to, I used to because I used to not pay for it. But then I realized there's some good ones on there. I liked, you know, for me, I had to pick. But if you, there is, there's definitely songs that you could pick from. It'll give you like happy, sad, you know, excitement. They'll give you different genres and then you could pick. But just look up royalty free music and you'll get quite a few sites. And, and some are trying to bait you, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's free. No, it's not. So just be careful. Zap Splat. Have you used that one? Zap Splat? Mm mm. I haven't used a lot of free ones only because I, I use, I've been using the same one for so long that I just, I've stuck there. So I'm kind of out of the loop. There's, there's another one. Uh, it's just a personal recommendation, but I saw on YouTube, like if you just search like royalty free music and something like that, there's like a lot of majestic music that comes up. Yeah. You can use a lot of that and it's, it sounds really good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mike, I just wanted to mention, okay, so now we're back in the editing world, which seems to be where I'm stuck. Sure. <laughs> But um, when I use Camtasia, they actually have built-in music options, and so I can just relay that over one of my tracks. I'm just actually, yeah. like, okay, I teach accounting, which is kind of uh, fascinating, right? Fascinating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, so, like, I have to talk to them about the debits on the left and the credits on the right and the, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, does music belong there? Like. Yes, I would yeah. say yes on all accounts. I, I, I never not use, even if it's super lightly in there, I'll tell you what, it, it, it just helps, I promise you. And um, so uh, maybe this is debatable, but in my opinion, I always embed a song in there because it just keeps, especially I did the 17 minute um, tire video, which normally you wouldn't really need a, a song in there. If you go watch it, I have a song embedded in there and it just kind of keeps the story going. It just kind of like, you know, keeps it moving, keeps it flowing. It makes you feel like it's still, you know, do pulsating. Got it. All right. okay. <laughs> so yeah, that means definitely that I, utilize that. Yeah, good. So that means I'm back to Camtasia then because that's the easiest way for me to overlay a track. Great. Well, if it hey, comes Julie, with yeah, music already, yeah. Can you, can you write a song about double entry bookkeeping? No, but it looks like Dawn has a rap song about debits and credits, so I invite her to share that now. Yeah, do you want to share that in the chat, Dawn? <laughs> We'd love to watch it. It'd be a great music video, just saying. Just yeah, saying. I think you should share it. And uh, that's, that's something I will, I'm looking forward to checking out as well. <laughs> She's trying to find it. She's trying to find it. Uh, I, ho I hope you can find it. I hope you can. So uh, there was a, uh, some questions about... Um, microphones i was going to show i got this little microphone a lapel mic for i think 12 dollars on amazon pre-covid yeah. and boy it made such a difference and then you know i've got microphone like the these 
Is it pronounced Logi or? Lo I don't know. Logitech, Logitech, yeah. Logitech, yeah. Logitech, yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, any recommendations that uh, that you could provide for for uh, inexpensive uh, audio that you know specific things that people could? I actually think these were pretty darn good for you know for the cost. They were so so inexpensive. Uh, sometimes you get what you pay for, I guess. If if you Tanya, if you found one that's that cheap and it works good, I would recommend that one because the ones I'm thinking, yeah, the ones that I'm thinking, I'll show you guys really quick. Um, my screen and what do I have to put? Share computer sound. I don't uh, need yeah, that. Yeah. No, just share screen and then click the one on the top left that says. Um, okay. So can you guys see that? Yeah. So I know these are. Uh, a bit pricey, but wow, I've I've heard them. So I've heard them personally. So I guess I could say, these these two right here, the um, are are similar. I think they're, I would almost say this one right here. Don't spend two fifty, but you plug this one right into your phone, uh, which is nice. But it also you can get lapels with it, so um, it comes with a little bit of a lapel, either right to your phone or a lapel that you stick on uh, on your shirt or whatever. But um anyway so that that's a little bit expensive sorry i I'm not i'm trying i'm not very good at finding cheap stuff but i tend to want to go with stuff that i know is going to work that's going to sound great because ultimately for all of you guys right now sound is is really key if you sound like you're in a bathroom or if you sound like you're in a hallway it's just gonna you're gonna lose people right away so i always you know with with the sound equipment i use i, I pay One, for the right stuff seven eight nine ten all Sorry. What's that? Sorry. Sorry about that. I've got some. That was my fault. Sorry about that. Uh, oh. One thing that um, just I've, came I've had, to uh, my... found. Dawn found her video. So, oh, so uh, I, yeah, I was actually going to share that. If uh, do it, do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's do yeah. this. Let's do. It. Okay. So, Dawn, is this the right video, Dawn? Does this look like the right one. PWC, the homies at Deloitte, E and Y and KPMG. I be big for pimping up at PWC, the homies at Deloitte, E and Y and KPMG. Hello, I'm Raymond Chan, chartered accountant at your service. Here to save you lots of tax dollars, you deserve it. If you're a big baller, I could tell you what you're hoarding. I could be your superhero, meeting standards of reporting. I started from the bottom, ticking time. Now I'm here, journal entries every day. That's how I started my career, man. Now I'm in the limelight, cause I count right. More like long nights, eating Uncle Ben's brown rice. If I leave work early, the partners will want some answers. So I sleep under my desk like my name is George Costanza yo I used to be a well-rounded person till I caved in my hobbies include cooking I don't mean financial statements listen I love my job you should know I'm not whining I just work so many hours my looks are double declining but I got some CA swag and I'm feeling the power so let me put this rap song on my billable hours and let's go money all day money all day boy oh my all right I don't think that's oh my a video, and I don't think that that's going to sell them on accounting either. <laughs> I, I actually like that. I thought that was pretty pretty darn that's good. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, who, who uh, is that? Yeah, who? I, I'm not sure who that was, Don. I don't know if that's, that's not exactly the right one. I don't know why. I think they updated it, because the one that I had was a debit and credit. It was debits on the left, credits on the right, debit left, credit right. <laughs> And it was a really snappy song, Julie, that you could have used. Um, yeah, I got that one. That's that's the one that you posted. So Tanya, you went off on a whole different. Oh, I don't know where I was then. <laughs> okay, I was on the wrong one. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. The, yeah, the debits on the left. I I just got it from a fellow colleague that posted it. But yeah, it's it's oh, a little entertaining. It does make the students remember debit on the left, credit on the right, because they get that tune in their head. It's uh, yeah. Hey, I mean, I, I, that's I mean, if you go back to being a toddler, and I mean, that's how they teach. The kit, I mean, that's still works nowadays. I'm sorry. That's why we remember every lyric of a song usually because it's 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 a melody. It's something that's yeah. totally proven to be true. So, Don, if you want to do that, some sort of song, some sort. I mean, if you already have that and you want to redo that or make a video, 
Sign me up. I would love oh, it. I, know. I would love to watch that, Don. I would love to watch you wrapping a, a video. Maybe Julie and Don could do a believe, rap video. I believe I see a collaboration coming. Oh, up. yeah. Accountants, yes. accountants love to rap. Oh, accountants, yeah. uni accountants unite. <laughs> We're so hey, good we, at it. Hey, I'm just saying. Yeah, we can you guys need happen. to find some money in the budget for that one. I, I'm totally. Good for that. I know. I would. I would. I would yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about a go? How about a GoFundMe for the uh, rap song? Huh? Go yes, fund me. I would love that. That's yeah. We can do a crowdfunding just for that because I would go. love that. So, <laughs> so that's really uh, funny. We're out of time. Uh, Mike, do you want to uh, maybe a. Uh, Take, uh, take us out. Uh, uh, Rohan uh, did share a link that he'd like all of you to to grab and if you can give us some feedback. Um, but Mike, leave us with anything and maybe share your contact information with everyone. Yeah. Um, first off, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate this. I, I feel kind of like, wow, I can't believe people are even listening to me. <laughs> um, just grateful for your attention. And if you guys have any video needs, any sort of... Uh, even just you guys need a little help and point in the right direction um, on certain apps. If I if I have a link I could send you, I'll send it your way. I have no problem answering your questions still after this. Uh, but if you'd love to work with me, get a hold of me. I'd love to. Um, there's a lot that we could do. I, what I told Automotive is this: Let me do a video and show you what's possible. Because most people think I, I don't want to be on video. I don't. You know, I, I'm not good at it. I'm not that. That's everything John told me and. I was able to cut out all the ums, all the space. I mean, I'll make you guys sound great and you let me deal with a lot of the communicating parts, but um, just grateful to be here with you guys. And again, my contact is at we are, it's we are kingdom SD at Gmail. I don't know if Tony, if you want to put yeah, that I'm in the go chat, ahead. but we are kingdom, we are kingdom SD, at G, at SD at Gmail. You, you could go on we are kingdom SD on Instagram and see some of the stuff I've done. And uh, yeah, I would love to love to maybe work with you guys or at least help point you guys in some direction. So, Awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, if everybody wouldn't mind, uh, maybe just for just for a moment, turning on your your camera, uh, we'll take a quick photo just to just to commemorate that we were all here together. And I, I don't know, it's starting to be a, a tradition with us. We're just getting pictures of, of the things that we do together. So. And since we're never in the same place, this is us being together, right? Uh, thank you, everybody, for turning on your cameras. Is anybody? I don't feel like you have to, but if you if you uh, would like to turn on the camera, wonderful. Hi, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Uh, for you to see everyone too. Um, there's the uh, the grid view. Okay, wonderful. So awesome. I'm going to take a, a photo in about. Oh my gosh, Angela, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to take a photo. <laughs> so uh, three, two, one, cheese. 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 Maybe one more. Three, two, one. Cheese. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I actually heard it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for being here. Uh, if uh, and if any of you uh, are, want to get a hold of, of Mike, uh, didn't didn't uh, grab that out of the out of the chat. You can grab that now, or you can always you know go through through me or uh, Denise. Leave one of us. So. All right, thank, you. thank you so much, and thanks for being here, Mike. Bye, everyone. Thank we'll you guys so much. Thank, thank you, Mike. Mike. Have a good thank one. Thank you, Tanya. You're very welcome. Thank you. thank you. That was a good one, Tanya. That was thank good. you. Th thanks for. Bye, Rohan. Thanks for coming. Wonderful. Bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>